In order to understand division of fractions conceptually, there are two things you need to understand. One is division, and the other is understanding how to apply that to fractions. But there are two ways of thinking about division. Partitive and quotative. Part Partitive division is also called fair share or partitioning division, and quotative division is also called measurement or repeated subtraction division. To show you what each type means, I'll give you an example of them. Supposing you have some cookies in a bag. Supposing you have 15 cookies in a bag. 15. You want to share those cookies with three people. So you're going to get three little bags and you're going to put the cookies into the bags in such a way that they are fairly shared between those three people. Okay, I passed out all the cookies. I put them into three bags. And now my question is, how many cookies are in each bag? So I knew that I have three bags and I passed out the cookies and I want to know how many cookies in each bag that is an example of partitive div division or fair share division. Now for quotative division, I'm going to start with that same bag of 15 cookies. But this time, instead of knowing how many people I'm going to give it to, I'm going to know how many cookies fit in each bag. So I'm going to take a bag, and this bag I know only three cookies fit in. So I'm going to take these three cookies, and I'm going to put them into this bag. One, two, three. One, two, three. And I still have some cookies left over so I can make another bag. I get another bag, I take these three cookies, and I put them in this bag. So this is the quotative way of thinking about division. Parceling out the cookies one bag at a time. And now I've passed out all the cookies. So you can see why this is called the sub subtraction way of thinking of division because I'm taking away three cookies at a time, putting them into bags, and I know from the start that I have three cookies in each bag, and my question is how many bags can I make? So with partitive division, we know how many groups there are, we want to know how many or how much are in each group. With quotative division, we know how many or how much are in each group. We want to know how many groups are there. If this is new for you, you might want to take some time to practice thinking about when situations are partitive and when they are quotative. Here are some examples. It's important to know about partitive and quotative situations because even with whole numbers, it can help us understand and think about real situations in which division arises. But when we turn to division of fractions, it becomes critical to understand quotative and partitive division. The first situation we'll look into is dividing a fraction by a whole number. One half divided by 5. I want to know what does this mean? This type of problem is most easily conceptualized as partitive division. Here's an example in which it might arise. In a relay race, students are going to run one half of a mile. Each team has five students on it. How many miles will each student run? This problem lends itself to solving using a number line because we're dividing distance. Students are running a half a mile, so I'm going to make this my 0, and this my 1, and this my 1 half. And then I'm going to think about dividing this half. This is the distance they ran, even though they might have run it around a track. I'm representing it as a straight line here. And I need to divide that into five equal parts. What is each of these parts? I can see when I continue to partition the whole that there are 10 of these, and so each of these is 1 tenth of a mile. I can see using this number line that each student will run 
one tenth of a mile. So one half divided by five equals one tenth. You could also solve this problem with a fraction kit or another fraction manipulative, such as fraction circles or bars. Let's look at a different fraction problem. Five divided by one half. This problem is quite challenging to conceptualize as partitive division. Here's a situation in which this might arise. I have five cups of flour, and I'm using a recipe that calls for half a cup of flour. How many batches of this recipe can I make? I think this is a cup, and if I chop it in half, then I have a half a cup here, and another half a cup here, and I can do that with this cup as well, and this cup as well, and cups, and two more cups. Each cup, I'm taking a half of a cup at a time, and I'm seeing how many half cups are there in five cups. So there are two half cups here, two half cups here, two half cups here, two half cups here, all together. There are two, four, six, eight, ten, or five times two, or ten half cups in five. This problem can also be solved on a number line. I can go from zero, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm asking that same question. How many halves in five? Well, I can divide each length, whole length into halves. Nine halves and ten halves. So how many halves in five? Ten. There are ten halves in five. This problem could also be solved using a fraction kit or fraction bars, counting the number of halves in one, two, three, four, and then five, and that can be related to the number line. Or it could be solved using fraction circles, again, counting the number of halves in one, two, three, four, and five. In this video, we've seen that different types of fraction division problems lend themselves to different ways of thinking of division. The partitive way of thinking of division is useful when we're dividing fractions by whole numbers. And the quotative way of thinking of division is useful when we're dividing whole numbers by fractions. I'm going to give you some fraction problems now for you to try in order to flex your new partitive quotative muscles. I'm also going to suggest a couple of resources that you can use to help you review and solidify the ideas presented in this video.